Hello and welcome to the show. We are back here on BeamNG Drive with one last visit to the Enduro Drone, where three vehicles are going to be driven till destruction. Now, my choice of cars today are essentially the wrong spec for vehicles that have survived quite well around here previously. For example, the Marama led the series for an incredibly long time. Uh, however, that was with the, I think it was the Lux version of the car, big, softly, wallowy vehicle, or as relatively speaking. Instead, what I've got here today is the street-tuned version of the car, and we're going to see how this fares. This has got sportier suspension, lower suspension, and uh, yeah, like I said, that's about it. Probably a bit more powerful, a bit faster. Uh, not quite sure how it's going to survive, and that's kind of the point of this test. We're not going to expect it, necessarily, to outstrip the normal version of the car, although we have been surprised by vehicles in the past. Sometimes, or well, some of the sport vehicles haven't done too awfully around here. We'll kind of have to wait and wait and see. I mean, the concern, of course, is we're going to lose a wheel. Uh, we're going to lose a wheel. We're going to bend steering. Steering is probably the biggest concern, actually, with this car. A uh, radiator is a possibility. With the rammers, you tend to have to hit pretty hard to actually lose the radiator on this, although if it's bouncing around, if we start taking, you know, extensive damage to the suspension, the car's going to bounce around, it may well end up bouncing into something and, you know, take out the radiator and whatnot. Uh, drive shaft on this, I think, is pretty well protected, fuel tank and so on, fairly... I say fairly safe. You never really know. That's the joy of the Enduro drone. <laughs> That's the joy. You could drive the same car three times around here and have three different failures, um, let alone different specs of car. That's bad news for us. That's not what I wanted on the first time across there. Ooh, that has really battered the front right. The front right wheel is at a very, very unhelpful angle. We are not... I think we saved. I think we saved. I don't think we did any. Oh, this is very iffy to drive now. That's. <laughs> I've done a lot of those. Radiator is good. I was going to save the radiator. We haven't really saved it. We just not killed it, basically, here. Uh, which I'm kind of surprised about. I guess it was more landed on the front corner than anywhere else. The rest of the car underneath is fairly nice. And at least the wheel that is over does still work. Uh, oh, that's the wrong gear. Oh, I'd say that's the wrong gear. It's not in gear. I thought it was. Uh, yeah, the wheel on the left-hand side still works, and the buckled wheel does at least still go to centre, which is in some ways more important. And no, it does still steer a little bit to the left, so we've got enough steering lock to continue around the course. Uh, in case you haven't seen the Endurodrome before, vehicles are counted out if they can no longer make a corner. If, for example, I have to grab reverse to, to make a corner, uh, then that will be the vehicle counted out. Also, the vehicle cannot exceed 20 miles an hour. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, that might be a Marama in a lot of trouble. Christ, that is about the most vicious... That might be one of the most vicious crashes I've ever seen on this series. Um, I think this is probably going to be a Marama out. Uh, I actually think the front is buckled underneath the car to the point where the wheels aren't actually... The front wheel is not even touching the ground. It's certainly not going to do any driving. The radiator's gone. That's the least of our issues. We can almost steer... Uh, that has now put the engine off. We will get it started back up, but uh, it is actually now wedged on the ramp even. Let's just have a pull of that car up a second. We'll just pull, pull that out. Do we have any steering left in the vehicle? I think that steering is completely... I think the front... <laughs> I mean, we've hit that... I mean, we've, we've, we've clipped the top of this landing zone before. I've never seen it do that before to a car, though. That has... That is some seriously Im impressive destruction right there to the front of the Marama. Uh, can I, I want to try and lift it up without actually wrecking anything. I'm curious to see. Uh, can we just if we just do that with a, a tether it uh, to there so we can just have a little bit of a look around. Yeah, I don't know what quite what got caught on there, but something. Yeah, so the one wheel that is good on the car. Um, that is actually now wedged in there, typical. That's not helpful. Uh, the one wheel that is good has got the bumper well <laughs> wedged underneath it. Well... Uh, as far as wrong wrong specs of a strong car goes, uh, this one was, I mean, a bit iffy. However, I guess that lip somewhere very, very savagely caught the car. And that is a Marama very, very dead. Up next, we have got the Dove, essentially a kind of highly modified four-wheeled Pigeon. Now, it's quite difficult to get, a, I guess, a wrong spec of this, if you like, as 
well, it's still kind of an all-wheel drive off-roadery. However, this is the fastest version of the vehicle, uh, and it is very, very light, which <laughs> combined together might make it quite interesting. It will probably bounce around. This is going to bounce about a lot. I'm expecting quite a lot of rolls from this. I think the normal dove fell over quite a lot. Uh, this we may well see a large number of rolls, so it's going to have to try and put up with well, the damage that's going to come with that. Uh, buckled wheels. Again, we might see it be steering on this if it isn't radiator. Uh, the dove, well, quite narrow, relatively tall. Uh, liable to falling over, especially with bumps like that, Christ, and it gets kind of quite savage when it's bouncing around, so that is always something fun to watch out for, ooh, it's going to be going across bumps, it's going to be going across speed bumps, awkward angles potentially on its side, I don't think we've actually, we've lost a wing mirror, but aside from that, I think amazingly we've got away with everything, not having tweaked uh, anywhere in the, in the chassis. This, certainly the vehicles I have today, this is most likely to go a decent a decent way. At the end of the day, the dove is fairly sensible. It was unlucky not to beat the Ram Miramar sorry, when it ran. So, yeah, I think... Ooh. <laughs> there we go, there's the first roll. Um, yeah, we're probably going to see this go fairly well. Oh, we're going to have a bit of a judder. I mean, we can lose bodywork, doesn't matter. Unless it starts getting caught up somewhere important in the vehicle. We lose bodywork, doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, it's not that much bodywork on this to lose, really. You've got the bed and you've got the cab of the truck to fall off. It does bounce around a lot. I don't know whether it be like dampening of the suspension or something. Uh, like, it has got... It's, it's okay in terms of off-road suspension -y, but it just kind of pings its way around. Also, this version does come with diff locks, so if we do lose a wheel, um, we should still be able to drive. We shouldn't have... I mean, it's, it's all-wheel drive, but we could potentially run this as a one-wheel drive if we manage to damage it that far. Very unlikely. I don't know if we ever have had an all-wheel drive car end up being one-wheel drive. I'm not sure. We have had a couple of vehicles that will work that are... Well, that have diffs that will work, that will allow them to as front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive run as one-wheel drive. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we've ever had an all-wheel drive car end up like that. I could be wrong, though. Somebody will probably correct me if I am, because I can't remember everything that has run in this series. Uh, steering... It kind of wanders a little bit at the moment, which suggests I might... Have, oh, that's not good. Get on the brakes. Thankfully, we're kind of going sideways, uh, which... I guess like the friction was enough to slow us down. That's something. We didn't end up in the wall, because those are that's kind of the big fearsome area really. Oh, that we get across there. It's fine. No real harm done outside of bodywork. Yeah, so the, the pinging randomly into the wall is, is or can be devastatingly Ooh, if I oversteer. Yeah, it can be devastating for that sort of a sort of a crash. But this all happened to the Marama uh, landing on, on the jump, which I <laughs> Again, still not quite sure. I guess we just got low enough at the front court, and the momentum had to go somewhere. Normally, just end up with a front flip, not a spin around. But there we go. Uh, this there is definitely something. Oh, there goes the first violent roll. That's a big one. We are going to come back down on the wheels. Did we snap anything? Did we twist the chassis at all? Uh, I think we're okay. We've, we've bent bodywork. We have bent something in the. But <laughs> no, stop it! Stop it! Stop it. There we go. We've bent a front wheel, I think. Yeah, front left wheel is bent. See, something up until that point, there was a little bit of iffy steering. The car was kind of wandering around the place. Now it is pulling more. It's nowhere near as bad as we have had some. It's not going to... Ooh! It's not going to prevent us from driving. There goes the front bumper. I presume that was what fell off at the front. Um... Yeah, it's not going to stop us going to stop us from driving. It just starts making it more difficult to position the vehicle, especially on the dirt. Admittedly, this isn't the worst vehicle in the world for tackling the ooh, tackling the dirt. As I think it's got some, it's not got well, some full slips. It's got some sort of off-roady tire on it, uh, and of course, all-wheel drive means it's not going to slide about as much or be as as uncontrollable as it could be. But it is just small out of positions is all it takes. You know, coming into here. Well, we're going to go for another roll. Uh, coming into there, for example, just a little bit out of line can lead to a roll. The difference between a roll and getting through, no problem. Uh, I think this is I think this is so light, it's almost going to roll when it hits these sort of bumps at the sort of speeds that it is capable of. That's actually quite nicely across there, but we're going to go for a roll anyway. <laughs> oh, we saved it. I... Oh, God's sake, stop it. <laughs> Fall over again. I'm almost not sure whether I want to be trying to prevent it rolling. Because um, I... I can kind of stop it from rolling, but I actually am 
running the risk of landing on a front wheel, and I could snap a front wheel off doing this. It's almost like a, just release the steering. If it starts rolling, just release the steering, let it do what it's going to do, and then sort it out later on. Might be safer. Might be safer. Doors hanging off, not thankfully getting in the way of anything just yet. Oh, let's get hit on the back of the vehicle. Fine. Now this has got, by the looks of it, leaf springs at the back, which we know are bloody strong. We have seen this time and time again in vehicles. Uh, leaf springs very, very tough to kill. We're going to go for another spin. Oh, we're going to park it. That's actually quite an impressive parking job. Well done, Dove. Uh, can we go back Oh, I guess, I think it landed on the door. Balance that one. Uh, <laughs> Leaf springs, tough to kill. Very tough. If they let go, they let go spectacularly and the vehicle becomes an undrivable mess. But they take a hell of a lot of punishment, which is good because we're going to be giving them a hell of a lot of punishment here. Uh, the concern for this, I guess, is the front suspension. I think it's double wishbone. Uh, my, my concern currently is that front left wheel that is it's actually now not pulling as badly as it was, but I think the front left might have collapsed a fair bit. Oh, that's still twisting on takeoff. I'm not quite sure why. Oh... Uh, that's a low speed, a low speed ping, low speed ping into the wall I can live with. Engine's turned off, don't know why. It's not a broken engine, it's just a low speed clonk into the wall, we're fine with. Uh, trucks just seem to be, I say try, tiny things, even though they're braking a lot, which would be a concern. So I've got an nose, what try to drive, <laughs> drive the tub around, not what you want. Uh, yeah, there seems to be quite a lot of, ooh, a lot of vibration, it's almost... Ah, that front, that front wheel is very bent onto itself. Uh, I mean, we're okay for now, but it will probably get worse for another flip in the dove. I seem to remember this being a characteristic of the dove. It's the characteristic of the dove and the pigeon, naturally, because they are narrow tooled. I mean, this has got the added benefit of four wheels. It does at least balance most of the time. Uh, the back looks a bit conky as well. Don't know, hard to tell. Uh, the bonnet's uh, <laughs> skewering the view. Oh, but it's gone back down. Uh, nope, it's not gone back down. It's kind of flapping around now. We're going to go for another pirouette. Amaze the radiator's surviving. All of this probably shouldn't tempt fate by saying that, but the radiator is doing a remarkable job of surviving all of these hits. Uh, oh, okay, so I think the... Okay, now the entire chassis is buckled. Uh, <laughs> the entire chassis is gone. Um, there we are... Oh, it's the rear... No, nope, we're going to go for another flip. This is... This is now starting to get to the point where I think we're going to see issues for the radiator. Some, at some point, one of these is going to do the radiator in. Uh, have we... Come on, turn back on again. Uh, <laughs> it's, I thought it might be suspension, but no, I think this is actually a buckled chassis, so we can only ever have three wheels on the ground at a time, which is... It's not the first time we've seen this level of damage. But it does now make the vehicle very difficult to drive, and that sort of clonk is not what you want to have. That's that's a radiator killer. It's a drive shaft killer as well on these. It survived that pretty well. Um, as far as beating the previous dove that has gone around here, the state that this is in, I'm gonna I'm gonna say quite unlikely. I'm I'm gonna say quite unlikely with the damage that's occurred because it's so difficult. I mean, it's it's not really slowed it down all that much, and it isn't going to stop it getting around a corner, but it's the now lack of control. It's that if we go into a turn, it's very easy uh, for the vehicle to spin wildly out of control now, and that's going to head it towards something solid, and we do that again. We bounce into the mud pit on our side. Mud pit's probably the safest place, actually, to hit sideways, because you're less likely to... You're less likely to have the wheels hit a solid object in the mud pit. You know, if they hit sideways on the landing here and end up in a, in a rock or whatever, uh, that's a problem. In the mud pit, there is no hidden rocks in there. Well, it kind of just... I think they absorbed some of the impact, basically hitting the mud, which is good. This landing here is a problem if I lose control of the truck. We've seen this wrecked vehicle. We've seen this wrecked vehicle stronger than the Dove uh, before. Oh, and we're going to go over another time. Still, the radiator lives in this. If we crash it enough, maybe it'll unbend the chassis for us. That would be okay. I wouldn't be opposed to that idea. Uh, fuel tank is actually another thing that is a potential hazard. It's quite difficult to kill, but you can see the fuel tank at the back. If we land awkwardly enough from one of these rolls, I guess we could see that let go. we go for another pirouette. It's the toughest radiator in the world in this car, I think. Of all of the vehicles, of all the vehicles with radiators, I mean, okay, sure, the electric vehicles that have run, and you can never overheat them, how the way beam works, but, uh, yeah, this, for a radiated vehicle, it is very, you can kill it, but it's very difficult. Uh, I'm not sure how much of the damage at the back of the vehicle is the chassis and the axles being 
bent and not pointing the right way? How much is the bodywork being bent and not pointing the right way? This is where we have difficulty because I've got to hit, I've got to try and hit 60 going up here, and I just can't hit 60 and keep it in a straight line. I mean, of all the places to have ended up in, that's probably one of the better if we can drag the vehicle out. Now, thankfully, we have not got caught on the foliage. Um, if the vehicle gets stuck in the foliage, I have to try and drag them out. I cannot reset them, because if we do any of... I think it's F7 can reset the vehicle with the damage, but it resets all of the temperature and fuel and whatnot, so it would be unfair to a vehicle. Uh, so if it does get completely wedged in the trees, you just kind of have to pull it out as best you can and try and not damage it anymore. Uh, you know what I said about leaf springs giving up? If they give up, we have problems. I have a feeling we might have had one given up on the rear left of this. So that looks like we've lost all sorts of suspension movements, and now we've got real control issues, because every so often weight transfer just pings it at a wall. I mean, it is still going. We'll give it... <laughs> give the Dove credit where credit is due. It's still working. It's putting on It's putting on that show. You know, the, the important thing is uh, not so much how far a vehicle goes, but how much of a spectacular mess it makes as it disintegrates. And the Dove is living up to... <laughs> up to expectations. Uh, maybe it's not the leaf spring that's had it on that corner. I don't know what's gone on in that corner. It might have actually just pinged itself back out again. Uh, who knows? It's very, very balked everywhere. Underneath. But we're still going. We've still got mostly full steering. It occasionally loses control of itself around the course. But, yeah, mecha that's it, mechanically wise. Drive shaft, engine, brakes, all of that lot. Still all good on here. We haven't even lost a tire yet, again. Might tempt fate doing that, but uh, it's, it's all suspension damage, and that's what the Endurodrome has always been great at. Uh, Endurodrome has always been fantastic. Oh, we actually really do. Oh, we're going to lose the bed in a minute. <laughs> and this this circuit is a destruction circuit. Has been brilliant because a lot of the previous ones, like the Baja Rama and so on, tracks relied on kind of jumps, which is fine. Don't get me wrong, the jumps are the spectacular. The spectacular places for crashes and whatnot, but they have kind of relied on them. Whereas here, it's sort of it's, it's more the the bumping, the bumping across that has gradually eroded suspension to the point where it stops working properly. To the point where you hit a speed bump and it takes out a wheel and that sort of thing, which has been a very interesting and, and different sort of destruction circuit around here. It meant things like the trucks could do well. It meant the T series uh, is well currently at the top, unless this thing can somehow manage to soldier on for. Uh, <laughs> another long, long time. He's got a long way to go, and it's spent most. It's spent as much time upside down as I think it has going forward. Um, that's gonna be. Oh, that is a big hit on the front. I can't actually pull the vehicle away. That's how much damage we've got going on on that front left now. The steering's really having trouble. Um, it turns left fine. It doesn't really turn right, or it turns right inconsistently. It's a very difficult thing to gauge. Oh, don't hit there. That's not what I wanted. Still, go <laughs> it doesn't give up. <laughs> it really, really doesn't give up this thing. We're gonna try and fit it through the shed. The problem is, it's just as oh, that's okay. It might it, that might be us done here if we cannot get that wheel to unping itself. That may well be us dead. Um, it has actually the wheel. The entire wheel has come out. Now I am allowed to right the vehicle. We are allowed to put the vehicle back onto its wheels. Um, yeah, that's that's gone. I don't think I can drive. I, I, I say I don't think I can drive with that. Um, if the wheel had come off, I'd be fine. The problem is, is that I cannot steer. Oh, well, I mean, no, no, no. no now we're just going around in circles, truck. That's not quite how this is supposed to work. I mean, I guess technically. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have cleared 20 miles an hour. Uh, this is... I mean, I have actually got some sort of steering with it. No, I think, I think it's... Oh, if we can get you back on the road, it will technically... We've kind of gone quite off-piste here, but it's almost like I can use some form... I've <laughs> never driven a vehicle like this before, but it's the Dove is still going. Uh, although that's going to be another roll. Um, <laughs> there's almost control here. There is almost, almost control in what's left of this vehicle because I can use it as an anchor to turn the truck uh, when I need to turn one way. But my steering is basically inverted at the moment, so I'm steering left to go right, right to go left because I need because that's what I'm having to do with the wheel bent over like that. But bumps are not going to be fun. 
Uh, bumps are not going to be fun. You know what? I mean, it's it's still it's still it's really messing with my mind trying to drive this. It's still driving, and it is still. I never had to grab reverse to get it around a corner. Uh, it is past the 20 mile an hour crawler rule. If a vehicle can't exceed 20 miles an hour, it is counted out. This is. Uh, I'm having to. Oh, this is so weird. I'm never going to be able to make this jump with any sort of control or speed. Oh, that's some trees. We're going to fall over again. Uh, oh, the fuel tank's gone. <laughs> um. I don't know if I'm actually technically in the foliage or not stuck there. That might have actually buckled the wheel to the point where my clever little driving technique doesn't work anymore. Oh, I think I've broken it in a different way now. I think I've got, I think it's now not going to even be, ah, oh, now the steering has gone. It got further. <laughs> it's got further with driving with the wheel on the deck, but it's now folded the wheel up underneath. Oh no, come on, come on. Just ping the wheel out. I don't think it's going to matter because I think the vehicle with the ruptured fuel tank is just going to run out of fuel anyway. Uh, can we... Oh, I need to get that wheel back down again. There we go. No, no, because as soon as I steer now, it's just picking it back up into itself. So I can't even use my steer the wrong way bit and to sort it out. No, wait, on. if we go like there, then really, no. <laughs> oh, I think that's it dead. I think that is, that is the vehicle dead. What a run. What a run from the Dove. Very, again, more spectacularly failures. Spectacularly broken bits on the vehicle. I can't believe that made a couple of corners. It was almost working until we ended up in the trees. I guess it just bent something that a tiny bit more to stop me managing to use the weird driving techniques we had got working. But there we go. <laughs> the Dove impresses, but is very much dead. And finally, we have got a Moonhawk. I was going to run the Regency. However, that seems to be having some issues with my game. So <laughs> instead, we're going to run a... Fail Race Motorsport Moonhawk, uh, which is on full slicks, massive amounts of power, not going to be very controllable, has a mighty wing. And the Moonhawk, own, well, I, I slightly forgot about the Moonhawk. I, it was one of those cars I just uh, presumed I had run at some point, forgot about it, and never ended up actually running a Moonhawk. So uh, we did have one run a little while ago. Uh, they've, I think this would only be the second Moonhawk to uh, go around here. So we will give this monster a chance. It's in full race spec, which means, well, you've got the hill climb splitter and wing and whatnot. Race tyres, very low, very, very stiff suspension. Not liking, not likely, sorry, to like this sort of uh, terrain. I've got to try and keep the nose up a little bit. Uh, of course, massively powerful engine. We lose the radiator, will overheat very quickly. Although, because there is going to be so little grip in this car on the dirt, these sort of vehicles do have an advantage. You see, oh, the rules for this series are that I have to run the cars as fast as I can. I can't just, you know, slowly crawl about the circuit to preserve a vehicle. I've got to run them as quick as I can. Now, this sort of car on dirt, I can't actually run quickly because even trying to, it just spins the wheels and spins out. So you've got to be very, very careful with the throttle, which does mean in places this is actually hitting jumps and bumps slower than the likes of the rally cars. Yes, it's not, or the off-roaders as well. Yes, it's not as strong as they are, uh, but it does hit things with slightly less force, which can work in these sort of vehicles' favour. Ultimately, it's unlikely to trouble the T-Series at the top of the table, or the Dove, or the Marama, the original Marama. Uh, <laughs> we have rolled over. Uh, that was a very, very sedate roll, and we have kept the mighty wing on the back. That's what we like to see. Unfortunately, we've rolled over just before a jump, where we could really do, and that's where we're going to have issues. Uh, <laughs> we've rolled over right before a jump that we really needed a bit of speed to try and clear uh, and we can't just can't get the power down. That's the that's the difficulty with this is that you've got no traction trying to get going. Come on Moonhawk, there we go. Avoid the rocks if we can, if we've got the grip to do it, which we just about do. And we're just going to crab our way up towards the next bit. Woo! <laughs> we have not yet had a vehicle hit the gantry there. The Moonhawk really tried. That's probably the closest, even out of all the trucks, that is the closest we've had a vehicle get to smacking the gantry in the shed. Oh, we're going over this way, apparently. I've, oh, yeah, the steering's very buckled. So, from this opening, opening lap, steering is poorly. Now, I will struggle to get power down coming here, and I might have issues positioning it for the ramp, but we do have a lot of power. If we could even vaguely get half the power down, we should be it fast enough to clear this neatly, which we do. It clonks down hard on the front. Ooh, we're going to go for a spin. I'd rather have a spin. I mean, I'd rather have a spin than a roll. And I'd rather have a roll than a straight head-on into something solid. Um, spin is probably the best outcome we can have there. Oh, 
that looked like it was horrible for the rear axle. All of my steering is wonky at the moment. Nothing's really working at the front of the car, which is a concern. But, I mean, we've made it further. We've made it further than the Maremma did. The radiators survived lap one, which is a surprise in some regards. Uh, Christ. So, yeah, not only have I got immense amount of power that doesn't like being on dirt, I've got immense amount of uh, wobbly steering. And because this is on the big racing slick tyres, there's so much grip on the tarmac that it actually kind of pings itself about when you're trying to counter steer and, and catch it, which may well put more stress on bits of the car, wheel axles, drive shafts, uh, rear suspension and whatnot. I don't know what rear suspension this has got in it. Might have some more leaf springs for, well, hopefully, for, for some strength going on there. Either way, we're on to the second lap, which for this level of, of track-based car isn't too bad. Can't carry it. I can't carry any speed around here because I am struggling to get the vehicle turned. Doesn't help when the vehicle's spending most of its time in the air, but we are struggling to get it turned. I think the front, I think the front wheel's damaged. It's just got a lot of toe in on both sides. Can't avoid those speed bumps anymore because I've not really got the steering. We kind of just go. <laughs> you go where the car is going to take you uh, at this point in time, and you hope that where it's going to take you is vaguely the direction you want. Uh, into the mud pit we go. Uh, the back the rear axle certainly vibrating like mad, I think, on both sides. That could be a concern. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's a big roll. That might be the end of the Mighty Wing. No, the Mighty Wing stays. It's a little bit of a crooked Mighty Wing. Steering's got worse from that. We are at least fast enough this time around to clear the nasty landing zone. We don't cl clip any of the front wheels on a rock. Try and feed it up into here. Not again. <laughs> There's so much power available in this car, and I can use so little of it. Uh, primarily because we are bouncing around in the air, but just in general, I can use <laughs> so little of it. Just jukes have had to jump across there, still bouncing. Are we going to get the back of the car on the deck? We are. I think the rear suspension might have started giving out, and that might be an issue for us. And <laughs> I'll be amazed if this goes out from something like overheating, I feel like something's going to give out before we get to the point of wrecking the radiator, but you never know with these kind of cars. It's a big jump. It's a good landing. Oh, the drive shaft. It was a good landing on the front. It was just obviously twisted the car enough with no drive shaft. We will not be going anywhere. Sadly, I mean, you can see the missing drive shaft in that one. I thought we'd got the, uh, I thought we got the distance. I thought we'd got that jump right. I guess we just came down a little bit on the nose rather than on top of the uh, kind of, I guess, concrete, whatever it's made of, uh, landing zone. Came down on the nose and that just bent the chassis enough to put the gearbox and driveline out of out of position with the diff at the back. So, ah, oh, so that's a little bit unfortunate, actually. It was going surprisingly well. We had extensive damage on the front. I mean, you can see, you can see what happened to the front, poor front bumper on this. Uh, we've done, yeah, we've done a fair old, fair old amount of damage on the front was the drive shaft that let go in the end. Well, there we have it. The, the last three vehicles to run around the Enduro Drome, and thankfully nothing went out from overheating. So on to our leaderboard, and it would be the Dove that would go furthest of the day, up into 17th place, and it was a hell of a spectacular run with that. Uh, beats Montgomery, the Blackfoot, the Grand Marshal Coupe, losing out though uh, to the likes of even the 73 Pigeon, for example. Yeah, spectacular failure. At the end of the day, that's kind of what we hope for from the vehicles. Kind of a shame it couldn't have lasted longer driving in its weird manner. In the end, I think the bushes just kind of destroyed what little steering I had left in that. We had to go a fair bit further down to find the Fowler Race Motorsport Moonhawk. Again, it was a little unlucky managing to clonk out the drive shaft in that manner. Wasn't expecting it from the Moonhawk. From a Barstow, yes, but from the Moonhawk, perhaps not so much. It still beats a van, it beats the RX-7, it beats the Regency Limo, it beats the Bitron Raddy car, for example. So it's not too shabby. It does lose out to the Skoda, the ETK K series, the Pursue even. And finally, <laughs> we have the street-tuned Miramar. Not the... Least distance covered by a car, but it is right down at the bottom in 98th place uh, with the spectacular steering failure. Yes, it was very unlucky. It just clipped the top of the kind of concrete area that spun the car around and tore the steering apart. But that's the way it goes sometimes. That is the way it goes sometimes around this punishing, punishing circuit. That, though, is going to be it for this video, and it will be the last time we go to the Enduro Drome 
thank you all very much for watching. And I shall link the mods used uh, in the description so you can download them. There will also in the description be a link to the uh, kind of document with all of the finishing positions. So if you want to have a look at the full leaderboard, 101 vehicles have taken on this on this course. So if you want to have a look at the full the full leaderboard with the various failures and so on, uh, then you can. That though will be it for today. Until next time, a goodbye.